How and when did you become involved with Tug of War? When I was in my late teens, they had a team in Monticello, and uh, they asked if I would try to pull, and I, that's how I started, with a team known as the Washington Huskies. And I was with them for quite a while, and they were good. They were the best in the area for a long time. And when I moved away from Monticello to the footmill area, there was nobody around, so I thought I would see if I could get a team of my own. And uh, <clears throat> About what year was that? Uh, maybe in the early 60s. <laughs> maybe in the early to mid 60s. Uh, and I recruited some fellows that were still in high school. And then uh, I made arrangements with my old teammates from Monticello to go up and practice with them one evening. So we were to meet in the tavern in Monticello called the Boar's Nest. So I walked in with a couple of my young men and Bob Grosson, one of my old teammates from Monticello, looked up and he said, they must be some of Rudy's boys. And they were Rudy's boys ever after. That was the name of the team. That was the name of, of my team, yes. 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 It was Rudy's boys after, uh, and later Rudy's girls also. <laughs> And how did you, your team, become involved in the international style of tug of war? The international style. There again, it goes back to one of my former teammates from Monticello, a man by the name of Robert Pulfer, Bob Pulfer, a good man that came from Switzerland. And in the late, let's see, no, in the mid-70s, in the mid-70s, he went back to Switzerland one summer for vacation and he saw them pulling this style where you don't dare sit down. It's just constant pressure on the rope and uh, no time limits and the rules are very strict. And he came back and told us about it and uh, my boys, were the first ones in the area to pull this style. And in 1979, correction, 1978, that's 40 years ago now, we went with the first American team to compete in world competition in Dundalk, Ireland. And this was a world competition. Well, we didn't have a clue. We were just terrible. But the competitors were all very good. They were friendly. They were helpful. And the following year, in 1979, a gentleman by the name of Cathal McKeever came over just to teach us. He was in the Orfordville area for a week. And from here, he would spend a week with his men in Greeley, Iowa. And, and where was he from? And his he team? was from North Ireland, Cathal McKeever. Yes. And now it's been pulled that way ever since, and including in Canada. So, and getting back to Bob Pulfer and his friend Normie Legler, they traveled thousands and thousands of miles all over the United States and the world promoting the sport. A good man for sure. And by the 1980s, how was your team doing? By the 80s, my team was doing very well. But everything has its time and its place, and uh, I don't remember the name, I don't remember the times, but uh, they just, 
You won national championships. Yes, we won many national championships. Yes. And in 1990, you were featured in Sports Illustrated. Uh, there was an, an article in Sports Illustrated, yes, in 1990. Yes. Oh. And uh, tug of war many, many years ago was featured as an Olympic sport. That is correct. The last time it was in the Olympics, I do believe, was in 1920. But they couldn't field enough people anymore. We're trying to get it back, but it's pretty hard to get it back in there. But uh, <clears throat> uh, every four years the Olympics are on, and every two years, uh, yeah, every four years also in between, the World Games are on, the World Games. And uh, tug of war is featured in that. We have also competed in that. I was with a, with a team in San Francisco or in the in the Bay Area. I forget what year it was, but we competed there in the World Games. Oh, and now the teams that are in the United States are from Minnesota, mostly Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin. They have competed in world championships all over the world. Yes. And how and when did you get into doing announcing for tug of war competitions here? I don't remember that, but it seems like I've been doing that forever. My job with that thing at the microphone is to make sure that the teams come up always in the proper order and on time. And that's what, that's my job. <laughs> And then whatever you hear besides that, well, <laughs> what you hear is what you're getting. <laughs> the kids a chance, and it takes time. Okay, here we go. We've got Powertrain and Muddy River. Yep, yep, yep. Muddy River and Powertrain are on the rope now. And I want green and gold Mount Vernon on deck. And putting in the staging area, how does that? That sounds a little classier, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, Rick, how are you otherwise? Pretty good? I'm doing all That's good. I'm doing just fine. We appreciate the support they get from the sponsors. Uh, a lot of this would not be happening if it weren't for them. We do appreciate what you're doing. Anybody out there that has never seen this before? Thought oh, you're all seasoned veterans of the pulling here in Monticello. A lot of pullers from here years ago. I have to give credit to all these young men and women, some of them not so young anymore, but it is the young people that keep the sport going. Now I had one of my men that I used to have on the team years and years ago, over 40 years now. He stopped to see me here just recently and he said he would not trade all the money in the world for the opportunity that he was given to be with that team, to travel around the world and meet people of all kinds. And another one I 
I read a lady, a young lady puller from one of the teams in the States here. She first got interested when she was a little kid when we had a kids pull. We let the little kids pull. And she's been pulling ever since. So it's a good healthy sport and there's discipline in the ranks. There is never any fooling around, ever. And I'm happy to be a part of it.